Hey, how you doing? This is Game Time. I'm your host, Zach Hill. Normally in this segment, we talk about sort of the experience of playing on the Pro Tour. We break down really interesting plays that we've seen. Something we haven't talked a lot about, though, is what happens before you even set down in your chair for round one. We've got 10 rounds of constructed this event, and that means that one of the most important things you can do is just bring a good deck to the table. Now, we've seen Dragon's Maze just come out, and a key skill is identifying what the new set brings to your deck and what decks you can build. So I want to walk through sort of what I'd be thinking about as a former pro Magic player of what kind of decks to build and how to go about that. So taking a look at some Dragon's Maze cards, the first types of things we see, I'm looking at Voice of Resurgence, I'm looking at Advent of the Worm, and I'm looking at Scion of Vitugazi. Now all of these cards are cards for a green-white token deck that we've seen in Dragon's Maze. Something you want to be thinking about as you're building a Pro Tour deck is does the new set contain a deck that kind of builds itself? Well, if you look at it, it really does. Voice of Resurgence makes a creature with power and toughness equal all of the creatures on the battlefield. It's also a two-mana 2-2, two -two, one of the defining cards of the format, and punishes the blue, black, the blue, black, white, or the blue, white control decks that were really, really good before Dragon's Maze was released in the block constructed format. Really hard to cast Azorius Charms and Sphinx's Revelations with voice on the table. So you're saying to yourself, okay, is there anything else in this set that goes well with that card? Take a look at Advent of the Worm. It's exactly what you want. It's a 5 5 trampler at instant speed. It's really, really good against mid range decks because they can't attack into it. You're going to just cast it and ambush their attacker. Also, really good against control. If they play Supreme Verdict, that's a four mana card. Four mana for Advent of the Worm. You can respond and start attacking for five the turn after they cast Wrath. And finally, you've got Scion of Vitu Ghazi. Now, again, the green white deck before this set came out, it was playing. You know, make two five five worms for six. It was already playing populate, make your creatures indestructible. This card, for a mana less in concert with Advent of the Worm, arguably just as good as Armada Worm. So these three cards together almost build a deck with Dragon's Maze on its own. And if you look at, for example, Ali and Trazi, that's exactly what you see with four copies of each of these cards in a green-white deck that's pretty typical of a lot of the other Celestia decks we've seen. All right, so again, one thing to do, look at the decks the set builds for you. Let's take a look at the next slide now. So in addition to the decks that are in the set, you want to look at the decks that have come beforehand. Again, Esper Control, Sphinx's Revelation, Jace, one of the best decks prior to Dragon's Maze entering. So what does the set offer that's good against those cards? Etherling, tailored to be a card that is good in creature control mirrors. Sorry, control deck mirrors as a creature that can end the game. Now, that's really, really good when what your opponent's trying to do is destroy all of your threats and end the game with Sphinx's Revelation. Really hard to kill Aetherling, attacks for eight damage. Sin Collector, again, great card against decks full of instants and sorceries. It can take Sphinx's Revelation, it can take Azorius Charm, it can take Counter Magic. Extremely powerful way to gain card advantage against those decks. And finally, we take a look at Sire of Insanity. In a format defined by card drawing, Sire of Sanity eliminates that from the picture. It says, okay, you may have drawn as many cards as you want to off Sphinx's Revelation. Now it's time to discard our hand. Also a 6-4 creature for six. So these are the weapons that you use to attack the existing decks. Of particular note, Sin Collector and Aetherling, you can put into the Esper Control deck to use against other Esper Control decks. That's exactly what we saw when we got Mate Zadalkai in to do a deck tech. So again, you're looking for weapons to make your existing best deck better against other copies of the best deck. Another thing you can look for when a new set comes out. All right, let's take a look at the next slide. So one of the things that you do is sort of independent of the environment, independent to what the set makes for you, is kind of take a look at what the set's telling you to play. A lot of the time, removal spells you'll see will be for booster draft. Those usually come at common. Those make the limited environment better. So whenever you see a sort of a basic effect, an effect that you'll see in a lot of different magic sets at higher rarities, that's kind of development saying, okay, we're intending for this card to be a constructed card. We take a look at Render Silent. Now it's a rare spell, it's a counter spell, but it prevents your opponent from playing any more spells that turn. A lot like Power Sync, a card that was a staple of constructed magic a decade ago. We also see Renounce the Guilds. Again, a rare spell that's kind of just an edict effect, but very, very good against Tension Sphere, good against Geist of St. Trafton Standard, good against Sire of Insanity we saw. 
any multicolored threat, renounce the guilds can take off the board. And the rarity strongly suggests the development thinks this is a constructed plan. Well, what happens? This is exactly two cards we see featured in four copies in Uri Peleg's and Simon Bertio's nearly undefeated block constructed deck. So again, it's, it's great to just look at the set and see what development is already telling you, hey, this is probably a card that's good enough to play. All right, let's take a look at the next slide. Now, another thing you can do, in addition to sort of looking at what development's playing you, or telling you to play in this set, is what's been good before. If you look at Plasm Capture, you look at Putrefy, and you look at Maze's End, these are all cards that have been good in the past, or all effects that have been good in the past. Putrefy, it's a straight up reprint. We've seen it be good before, it's probably good again. And in fact, we've seen a lot of black, green, or black, green, red aggressive decks that are playing Putrefy exactly as you might think. Now, Maze's End, it's a card that a lot of people have asked me, hey, did you expect this card to be good? You know, it's sort of a thematic card. It's a pre-release promo. It represents winning the maze, which is sort of the creative treatment of the set. But it's also directly an homage to Thawing Glaciers, a card that was one of the most popular cards in the environment at the time it was legal. So you think to yourself, how did I use Thawing Glaciers? And maybe build a deck that takes advantage of this new riff on that card in exactly the same way. And the Swedish team did that, Team Mana Deprived did that, that's exactly what we're seeing. And finally, Plasm Capture, we look at it right here. It's exactly like one of the most powerful magic cards of all time, Mana Drain. Now again, it's not Mana Drain, it costs twice as much. But as we saw with Team Star City Games, it's enough of a path to tell you how to build a deck that lets you take advantage of that card. Okay. Let's take a look at some more instances. Now, we see here Spike Gesture and Vishino First Blade. Now, what are these cards? Well, one of the things you want to do with a new set is look at what are the fastest possible aggressive decks this new set may allow us to build. Spike Gesture slots nicely into Rakdos or Jund aggressive decks. It's a 3-1 haste for two mana that strongly says, okay, how can I take advantage of this card? Are there any decks that I can play that are aggressive decks that really want this creature? Vishno First Blade can attack for four damage of haste on the third turn of the game. Really good against the Esper decks that are trying to remove all the threats at sorcery speed. Again, you're trying to say to yourself, okay, this is one of the best aggressive tools I can find. What deck does it go into? And we saw on the deck tech earlier, Patrick Sullivan playing it as his three drop of choice out of the sideboard from Boros. And finally, there's one last thing that you always want to take a look at when there's a new set, and that is your Planeswalker. Small sets tend to get one's Planeswalker. Almost every Planeswalker that's ever been printed has been a real constructed card. Rao Zarek, tap a permanent, untap a permanent, lends itself to supporting an aggressive deck that can take advantage of getting a blocker out of the way. It also hurls lightning bolts, as you can kind of see by the art. A lot of aggressive decks want six damage. Control decks want two removal spells. So that gives you two different directions that you can go when trying to build a deck for this tournament, either aggressive or control. All right, so that's a lot of different cards that you can sort of use when you're sitting down for an event and a lot of ways to think about how can this new set improve my deck for the Pro Tour. I'm Zach Hill. This is Game Time. This is a tournament center. Let's get back to Pro Tour Dragon's Maze.